So we were watching the Super Bowl this week, Matt. Yep. Yeah, and there was a ton of releases of trailers or new versions of trailers right, that we've right. seen here for films and television shows. And so I think you came up with the idea, actually. Why don't we do a little bit of a special episode here? Yes, absolutely. And talk a little bit about those trailers that got released there were a ton. There were a ton, yeah. And you're right. It's kind of funny because they're not really anything that we haven't seen before. Absolutely. They're just new iterations of of things that we've seen previously. So mm-hmm. um, let's just dive right into this because there was a, a ton going on there. And um, let's just start off with, okay, yeah. with how great this is going to be. All right. So Transformers, The Last Night. Okay. Uh, so this is the latest from Michael Bay, the fifth iteration of the Transformers film. Yeah franchise mm-hmm. and um they had a a spot mm-hmm. and it hit all the same notes that i feel like all the other previous <laughs> transformers yeah. trailers. well and i was gonna say that i think the the thing that we've seen with a couple of these trailers is they've tried to do something a little bit different or maybe show another side of what the film or the show is going to be about right this one very much felt like it was kind of in the same vein yeah. And they were going down the exact same path as they have been with all I their know. trailers before. So did you overall get a better sense? I mean, of do you feel like any different after having watched the trailer? How about nope, that? Nope, I feel like it did nothing to add to it. I um, I, I mean, Optimus Prime is, is evil for some reason in this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's more like planet slash moon destroying technology flying around. Yeah. Um, One thing that it did show me that I was like, oh, wow, is Anthony Hopkins. Right. I didn't see him. I don't think he might have been in one of the other trailers, but that was the first time really like getting a chance to see maybe his character a little bit. Right. Interacting a little bit more. Yeah, he did narrate part of one of the opening, I think, of the previous trailer. Yeah. But, but you're right. Um, seeing him was kind of cool. It, uh, he, he is one of those actors that adds a lot of like weight, gravity yeah. to whatever he's a part of, yeah. regardless of the movie being good or not. But <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like I've just been let down and kind of burned on the Transformers series. Yeah, I think for me, this is kind of, it's definitely gone to my mind now of like, this doesn't seem like it's going to be like a really exciting addition to the Transformers series. Not that I was super excited for the last three right. of them. I think the first <laughs> one was the only one I was super excited about. Right. Just because I was like, whoa, I was a little bit hesitant about Michael Bay being attached to it but I thought he did a good job yeah I thought it was a fun film it wasn't like groundbreaking yeah in a lot of areas except for maybe visually and so this one I'm kind of just like okay just right. another part of the story of so it still visually looks really good yeah. um the all of them have you know have that same or same aesthetic visual flair yeah um and it still has all the Michael Bayisms, and but at the same time yeah you're right the first one was the best one yeah. and is going to be the best one unless this one is just <laughs> uh, you know like not terrible you yeah. know so, so we'll just i don't know we'll have to see well yeah so on a trailer scale one to ten or <laughs> one to one hundred <laughs> where would you rate the trailer oh my gosh uh i'll give it a, a d a let's d. give it a 65 cool i'm yeah. i'm a little higher i'd say c minus all right but that's still not <laughs> yeah okay not groundbreaking anyway awesome yeah <laughs> let's move on to the next one though cool. so um this one i'm actually pretty pumped about it's guardians of the galaxy volume two yeah and yes this again this movie is just looking like it's going to be a ton of fun mm-hmm. um all the characters look great um uh, Drax, <laughs> Dave Bautista's <laughs> character, yeah. has just like these just outlandish like comedy moments. Mm-hmm. And there's another one that dropped where, where the um, I think Mantis is her name. She gets yeah. hit, yeah, right in the back <laughs> of the head. Poor girl. She's like, he's like, he's like, look out! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, so it seems like they're setting her up as almost kind of a a humor character, where right. a lot of her scenarios are going to be more of like the unexpected, like she says something unexpected or something unexpected right. happens towards her that kind of is bleeding through with the trailers. I loved the usage of the Fleetwood Mac in this one yeah, it's because great. I think one of the things we talked about that I said that I'm really hoping to see with this film is that they're not suddenly like this super well-knit team that's coming together and they've got all their bells and whistles and eyes, you know, dotted and T's crossed. This right. seems like they really are setting up the characters to have some issues that they still got to work out. Yeah. You know, so the song, <laughs> the fleet, you know, chains keep us together. Yeah. It kind of fit well for me. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. Um, I also really, I like the addition, like they have these like anti-heroes, they have Yandu and they mm-hmm. have um, 
Nebula? Yes, I, think I it's believe it's Nebula. So yeah. they've somehow re- recruited them, or there's something going on w- with that. I'm not sure how that that worked out, but there's a really, really sweet slow mo scene with Yondu. Just it looks like he's just <laughs> taking out a hundred dudes again with his arrow. Yeah, yeah. Um, that looks pretty cool. I'm just really excited for this. Yeah, absolutely. And it, the one thing we didn't get, which I would have maybe liked to have seen, was you know the addition of Kurt Russell and Sylvester Stallone of part of the cast of the movie. It would have been cool, and I understand why they're probably keeping this you know a little bit tight to the chest is Mm -hmm. to maybe get a brief glimpse of what they're doing in the film right but again i understand why they didn't do that so yeah yeah. very much so but yeah i'm really excited i'm gonna i'm gonna give this thing an a i loved it nice it's great i would probably give it an a as well yeah Yeah. all right spot a's (laughs) A's across the board all right next this is your favorite series and i'm sure it was your favorite (laughs) trailer um pirates of the caribbean Wah, uh, Dead Men Tell No Tales. That's what this one should be called in my mind. Pirates of the Caribbean. Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, unfortunately for me, the Pirates of the Caribbean series died pretty deadly when the second, well, died deadly. It died for <laughs> me when Johnny Depp kind of took on the role again after the second and the third films. Right. I, I really feel like I understand why they're doing it. It's a cash cow for them at Disney to keep these films going. It's an investment in their parks, actually. You know, they have the rides and everything. Yep. But it's really not a story that I feel like at this point anybody's out there just like hankering at the bit to get more of. I mean, the pirate thing kind of hit big and everybody was super excited and Johnny Depp. And then the second, third film came out and everybody's kind of like, and not so much. And then the fourth one came out and I think everybody at that point finally realized, hey, we don't really need any more of these pirate films. Right, so right. now I'm like, what are they doing? <laughs> are they trying to? And it feels like maybe they are trying to kind of get back into that original feel a little bit. It's a standalone film. And then additionally, they're kind of, it looks like going back to more of the the character type ideas, the theme ideas of the first film, which is that undead kind of pirate crew, right, right. which was in the first one with Barbosa. Yeah. And, you know, Orlando Bloom is back. Yep, yep. Which is like, you, you know. You see him for like one second in <laughs> yeah. the trailer, but yeah. yeah. Right. So, I, I mean, maybe it'll be better than the last. Uh, we can only hope this is this is kind of the same format as a transformer series yeah. so it's like just everything after the first one is just like meh yeah um the although i will say pirates of the caribbean is is a much better film than the first transformers movie um they're both good i like both of them just in my opinion but uh i really like the first pirates of the caribbean this one um yeah it just it's just not hitting any of the right thing. And mm. in the trailer, they're, they're, <laughs> I felt like it was a blatant copy of the like the Logan trailer. Yeah, doing with the, the music the, and the Johnny Cash the beats. And, and yeah, it just it just felt like they were trying to do that same thing. Yeah, uh, and it wasn't really vibing, I guess, for me. But yeah, regardless. Um, Obviously, I'm going to check it out. I've, <laughs> I've, I've fallen for it every other time. Oh, wow. So I'll I'll probably watch it. Yeah. Um. And and you know, here's something to point out too. With the first Pirates of the Caribbean, Johnny Depp's character, Jack Sparrow, was not a main character. Mm. He was a supporting character. Absolutely. He was a great supporting character. Right. And so I yeah. think the the sequels then start to try, you know, they try to bring him more into the forefront. Yeah. And that's where it kind of stumbled, stumbled a little bit. Yeah. So he was, he was more of a catalyst for a lot of the stuff. The humor, a catalyst for a lot of the action. Obviously, in the first film, he's kind of, you know, going back and forth. And which side is he on? You kind of knew he had this, like, good motive. Right. Well, good heart, I should say, maybe bad motives. Right, right, right. Um, and so I think then with the second, third, agreed, they very much made, they tried to make this love triangle thing almost going on, mm-hmm. which didn't make any sense. That's weird. Because the whole first film was about, you know, um, Will and, uh, I forget her name at this point, but basically he's trying to get together yeah. with his girl. And then at the end of the first film, they're together. And so then to co- go back on that. It's in weird. The second, third yeah. film is weird. But I will say this, this is the one thing that I think is their potential. There, There is a slight potential for me and it's that. The problem, one of the main problems with the second and third film beyond the convoluted plot and kind of going back on characters and everything was there was no suspense to the story for me because I knew that, okay, well, all these characters are going to come out of this fight together and nobody's going to die. And whereas this film, I don't really know a lot of these characters. I don't really know what they're standing for. I don't really know what they're going to accomplish or trying to accomplish. So there is a bit of suspense again, with some of the story elements right. that I can probably get a little bit back into it. It, it intrigues my curiosity. Yeah, for sure. Um, if I had to rate this, I'd give it a, a C. Yeah. I mean, I, I liked it better than the Transformers trailer, but mm. um, yeah, I would give it a C. I'd give it a C plus. Yeah, yeah. all right. So this up. is strange, man. I'm coming a little more hopeful. One-upping me, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, this, this, this next trailer um, 
it's not for a movie, but I have to bring it up because it was part of it, and it's for Stranger Things season two. No, it's a great one. Oh man, yeah, I'm just so bummed out. Uh, they revealed this thing isn't going to be coming out until October. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my gosh, that yeah. is so far away. Yeah, but it is the perfect time because they're saying Halloween, and I mean, if there's a perfect time for a show like this to come out, I really feel like Halloween is probably the perfect season for right, it. Right, right. One of the images was of them dressed as the, the Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters right? yeah. So it With looks the like there's a, packs and yeah, everything. yeah. <laughs> it looks like the perfect amount of like '80s nostalgia too. Yeah. They opened it up with that that ego like commercial, a mm-hmm. retro one, and yeah. then and then it like flickers and ends up going to Eleven's face and she's yeah. up da- upside down her her nose is bleeding and then uh you see you see Hopper in there uh, mm-hmm. you see the kids riding their bikes yeah um and then you see like this crazy war of the worlds like I don't know if it's like new Demogorgon 2.0 yeah I, it's kind of hard to know exactly because you saw the drawing yeah that one of the characters had obviously drawn one of the kids yeah. and it's then it becomes this real life real world version i think that was interesting yeah because in the first you know obviously the first um series of the first season a lot of the action was taking place in kind of this other world this other dimension right the upside and down the upside down and that's where the demogorgon kind of resided and was at yeah and then now in this one it seems in like when he broke into the real world that was always a huge big thing right you know and there's always this danger of is he going to come into the real world whereas this film it looks or sorry series season it looks like it's very much going to bring it into the real world. Right. And it's going to be a lot more based here. So I could be wrong. They might be doing an upside down thing again. Yeah. I guess we won't really know for a while, but um, the, the the advertisements and all the interviews with the Duffer brothers, mm-hmm. it's, they're going for that, like that, uh, that sequel thing kind of based off of aliens mm-hmm. and yeah. um, Terminator 2, you yeah. know, going off of that stuff. <laughs> it and, looked like the fog, kind of, a mixture of, like, the fog with, like, some creature residing in, like, the storm. Because you mean the mist. The mist, sorry, yes, yeah. the fog the, is a terrible movie. Yeah, <laughs> not the fog, oh, <laughs> goodness me. I will wash my mouth out. But, I mean, they had a couple scenes where it looks like they're talking about this big storm that mm-hmm. was coming, and then um, this. it looks like the creature itself is in kind of this electrical thunderstorm right. kind of thing. So right. it looked pretty awesome. I mean, if anything, it really was the perfect way to just kind of whet my appetite yeah. and go, like oh my goodness and they have a shot in there i think with will who's on like a medical bed and he's being it looks like he's being examined with his mom yeah, which if so you see weird. just really quickly it's like in a little screen and so you're like okay so things are happening with him yeah you're like what you is know? going on yeah after the end of the first season you know you're left with questions so it's just a teaser but i'm gonna give this thing an a plus i just loved it yeah I mean, i'm right there with you a good. plus for me as well it's gonna be awesome um this uh, this next one is for a movie, and this comes out in a couple of weeks, actually. It's for life. Yes. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, Ryan Reynolds, Rebecca Ferguson. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm getting some serious, like, alien vibes, like, and that's yeah. what it's about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, so. Yeah, I, that was kind of my, so I, I had a bit of a fear with that in the first film because there's been so many alien clone ripoff type films that have been out there that have done it poorly and not as well. And so I I I feel I still think it looks very suspenseful. Yeah, it looks very freaky. But with this new trailer, I really did get a stronger, stronger, stronger sense that this is like in a way a, a ripoff of like the alien type thing. Yeah. And so I, I'm a bit let down by that. And it's hard to go in a different direction with it. And maybe they've got some surprises. Maybe yeah. But it's like you know you can only see this idea of like an alien life form that they find outside of the planet on a spaceship, and then it kills everybody. You only see that so many times right. before it's like okay, right. I've seen this scenario before. Yeah. And yeah. My, my other. Um thing with this too is yes we know that Ryan Reynolds is a funny man but every it's like any line that he had in this movie was some joke yeah um and I hopefully they balance that and he's just not like always you know spitting comedy left and right and yeah um but I think there is potential I did I did feel the tension in the trailer yeah so I felt like you know it has that potential to be there and I feel like that's a problem with Alien, the franchise after the first two is mm. they've wanted to create that same like claustrophobic suspense that you had in the first and the second one. Yeah. But they haven't really been able to create that and hopefully yeah. will with this new one coming out. Yeah. But, um, you know, if they can do it mm. and do it in a way that doesn't feel like they're blatantly ripping off Alien, then awesome. Yeah, I'd agree with you. And I, I hate to use the word derivative and that's yeah. kind of what I'm talking about here. Yeah. I hate to be like, oh, it's so derivative. But I mean, that is kind of what it is. Yeah. And I will be rooting for them. The truth is, I mean, the, fir- the first film is an amazing film. It's a classic. It's right. one of my favorites. But it has aged. You mm-hmm. know, everything does like the technology and everything in the film, even the hairstyles and everything is kind of look a little <laughs> yeah. outdated, you yeah. know. So this could be, you know, a more modern 
retelling a modern version or even a futuristic version yeah. of the alien idea. I like this one though. You get a little bit more sense of the alien too in it actually too. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, if you go online, you can see an extended cut where you get to see a little bit more of it also. Yeah. You get like its arm or something. Right. right, yeah. right. It looks like a squid. <laughs> He's you know, trying whatever. to give somebody a hug. Let's just believe that. <laughs> right. Yeah. He, he's a friendly believe alien. the best. Yeah. So what do you rate this one, Matt? Uh, I'll give it a B plus. I thought okay. it was pretty good. I'd actually give this one a B minus. So All right. Can well, we go in the other direction? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this next one is actually... Um, the next one that we watched was uh, A Cure for Wellness. Yes. Uh, Gore Verbinski, right? Yep. Um, and Dane DeHaan is starring in this one. To me, I'm not entirely sure what this movie is about yet, other than there's this like asylum where people feel like they have to go to to become well. <laughs> yeah. And um, just right off the bat, after watching it, I just I just think of Shutter Island. So the whole thing that I've felt the whole or during the whole trailer. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I liked, well, here's the thing. I didn't really like Shutter Island, actually. I felt like this is the movie that Shutter Island, in a way, was trying to be, but it was sort of a different a different version of it, if you will. Yeah. It, it, so it, it, this film, I think, will probably be a lot more intense, violent, and intense kind of horror probably. and suspense, whereas Shutter Island was kind of more of like a mystery with some action-y elements. Yeah. And that was building more of the suspense, but it was more of like a psychological type right. thing. Where this one is more of like a psychological horror. Yeah, and I feel like I so see. I see. I, I like Shutter Island. All yeah. right, I didn't yeah. think it was great, but I didn't think it was bad either. So yeah. I actually liked it. Um, but just speaking about the trailer, I like the way that the trailer was constructed. When it came on, I actually thought it was an ad for some sort of medicine, like a legit. <laughs> that like, was very creative. You know, I like, thought that was really cool too. Yeah, <laughs> like a Lipitor or yeah. something like yeah. that. You know, and it was very creative. And then the funny thing was that I was watching it, watching the Super Bowl with my kids. Yeah, and <laughs> we were watching it. This comes on. I'm like, ah, oh, okay. And Kayla, you know, my wife <laughs> earlier, she was like, you know, if something comes on that's too intense for them, go ahead and change the channel. And I'm yeah. like, oh yeah, I'll totally do that. Yeah. And I'm watching this i'm like oh this is not bad this is just a commercial and then it starts getting really weird <laughs> and yeah. then i was like oh oh where's the remote let's yeah, change yeah. this again. <laughs> yeah so i That's went back and funny. watched it later but i thought it was um i thought it was clever a really clever way to put it together and uh, let people know that it's coming out in a couple weeks yeah and we know i mean with the ring you know we know gore verbinski can kind of do horror can yeah. kind of do suspense pretty well he's done mostly the other movies he's done i mean he did all the pirate movies right, right. rango and lone yep. ranger so it's kind of cool to see him going back into a genre that he's been very successful at I think the funny thing that you said about that is that I don't know if the, I get what they did and why they did it that way, but yeah. I don't know if they recognized with the trailer that if you basically the worst kind of commercial for most people is those commercials of like the, are you depressed? You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And so like 90% <laughs> of the people that I was watching the Super Bowl with immediately stopped paying attention when that came on because they thought it was like a medical commercial. Right, <laughs> so right. It, the only reason that they started paying attention again is because, yeah, the music picks up and it gets a lot darker, but right. it was like, well, you almost made the anti-commercial commercial. Yeah, I thought it was clever. Um, yeah. I, I'd probably give it a B. I give it, yeah. So points for cleverness. I would probably rate this one. I think for me, oh, it's hard to say. Probably a B minus, but I'm gonna need a little more info. I, yeah. I don't think it gave me enough info yet. Um, yeah, that'd be the thing that's lacking for me too. Yeah. Um, so Taylor for, itself is a B minus though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, the next one is the Fate of the Furious, which is the eighth film in the Fast and Furious franchise, and um, probably. One of the best series out there if you're looking for just dumb action. <laughs> it's um, very true at this and, point. Yeah. And I've really, you know, honestly, I've really had so much fun with especially five, six, and seven. Yeah. Because this, they're really hitting their stride and, know, and knowing what they are and yeah. what they're doing. And this trailer didn't do a whole lot for me other than adding maybe a little bit more to the scenes that we've already seen. Yeah. Um, again, with the submarine and all the, you know, the most outlandish car chase sequences that you know we'll probably ever see at least until uh fast and furious 9 comes out yeah and um <laughs> but i mean other than that it's it looks like it's going to be exactly what the last several have been yeah so this one is a new director you have f gary gray who's directing this and this is his first film that he's taken on in the fast and furious franchise and so it's nice i think for a series like this that's been going on going on for so long that they're still bringing in more people yeah. and they're letting other people kind of have their vision of it. I will say that from everything that I've seen about this one, there's nothing really that's all that compelling about no. it. The What they've constantly done with the series is they've tried to force this idea that this is like a family and like a band of people <laughs> right, that have like right, come right. together through <laughs> these criminal activities, but non-criminal activities, right. which always felt very forced to me. 
it never really made sense. But yeah. you, this one that's really at the prominent forefront. And so, you know, I, I'd go to it to watch it to basically see action, to be mind, right. see mindless action. Mindless but if, action. They, if they go way too far into the whole idea of we're family and you're yeah. betraying the family, then I'm just going to be like, come on. Mindless action can be really fun if it's yeah. done well. And it, yeah. it, um, the that's, that's the one negative I'd say for me, this whole like uh, idea that, that, Dom Toretto's like <laughs> forgotten who his family was and is betraying everybody. Yeah, well, and the one before they had, I forget the girl's name, but yeah, she, she had, forgot she everything. She forgot. Yeah, it's like, and so who's next? Who's going to forget yeah, next? That's you right. Know? That's Michelle Rodriguez's character. That's yeah. right. She totally forgot about everything. Yeah. But yeah, if I had to rate this, I, I don't know. I, I C plus. Yeah. I would yeah. probably say C minus on my scale, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, if we're moving on, uh, the, the next one is Ghost in the Shell. Yes. And um, I. I thought it was very intriguing. It's like every bit of trailer that I've seen and even at the Super Bowl um, or on the Super Bowl commercials was every every scene looks very visually stunning to me. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and I think that's really cool. And it's um, even the music when they came on, it's like this loud like noise. Mm-hmm. And so like when people are done watching the game, they hear that. I mean, even that's an effective tool to get people to look at the screen, see what's happening. Yep. Um, but I don't have a sense of what the movie's about at all from the trailer. <laughs> it helps if you've watched it's based on an anime series. Right. Yeah. I know that and I'm not familiar with any of that gotcha. stuff. Yeah. It looks cool. Uh, I like Scarlett Johansson. I think I think she's cool. I, I um the the director did uh, Snow White and the Huntsman. Right. Rupert Sanders. Uh, right. Yeah. And um which I thought looked really great, but was lacking a little bit. It was kind of boring. Um yeah. but yeah. um I thought looked really cool. Mm-hmm. So I, I think if we can, you know, it looks like he's bringing that same visual flair, that same awesome kind of visual style yeah. um, to that, but maybe amp up the story a little bit somehow. Um, I think it, I think it's going to look pretty cool, pretty cool sci-fi thriller of some sort. Yeah. So I, I am somewhat familiar with the, the anime. I did watch the first film. There's been a, I think there's been like a whole series now in Japan and oh, probably wow. a couple films. I watched the first one because there's, you know, that's, it's considered one of the, you know, the most famous kind of animated films, right. you know, and it's, it's, it's a deep film. It's a deep, it deals with subject matter that goes pretty far into the realm of reality and the idea of what can create reality for a person or what can alter reality and right. identity and how you identify as a person or even an existence. Yeah. And so there's some really deep kind of truths or metaphysical theology and everything that goes into it. And so one of my biggest fears when I heard they were making this is that they were going to kind of give it the Hollywood treatment, yeah. you know, and deal with those deep subjects, but not deal very deeply with them. And so as of this point, I think visually and music wise, like you said, they are doing something they are making this deep and theological and they are going for something that is very artistic that looks like it has some deeper meaning and purpose to it and so that's a good sign although story-wise since they haven't really revealed a lot of what's going to be happening in the story i mean the synopsis on imdb right here i'm looking at it says a cyborg policewoman attempts to bring down a nefarious computer hacker okay i mean that's so basic and so generic yeah. and so i'm really hoping what they didn't do is pair up really good stunning visuals and you know cinematography and music composition and then put like the most base simple story with it to try and just get the most people in seats right right you know so i, I i'm excited to see it though this yeah, is a too. film that i actually am like really kind of like wow that yeah, looks pretty it cool. made me it made yeah. me excited too and i think that's why i would, I'd probably give it a b plus if i had to rate it i would give it an a minus actually okay. as far as interest level as far as what yeah. the, the trailer did for me yeah yeah for sure um and then the last one uh <laughs> we want to talk about here is is the um one that's clearly being made just for oscar consideration next year it's gonna win an award probably yeah. for best slow motion running probably <laughs> if you haven't guessed already that that one is for baywatch <laughs> yeah, there you go okay so i'm sorry this movie just kind of looks dumb to me <laughs> but yeah um the, with the exception of that trailer uh, the one the one thing that made me giggle was zach efron's um freedom line yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i kind of giggle at that i don't know uh, he, uh, zach efron is the best i think so far he's been the best part of all the previews for me right yeah um i love the rock i i think the rock is great in pretty much anything that he's in um he's he just kind of adds a lot of charisma to whatever he's a part of yeah um I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sold. The trailers don't really have me sold on it. I'm not, this one doesn't really make me any more excited to go see it. I wasn't really initially excited to go see it anyway. Yeah. looks like they're trying to give uh, Baywatch the 21 and 22 Jump Street kind of, yeah. you know, humor side of it. Yeah. Um, but 
that there's nothing like that is like okay i need to go see this because of this you know thing that's happening in this yeah. movie you know it just looks like it's they're gonna try and uh, make as much money as they can the opening <laughs> yeah. weekend yeah. Um, and see what happens. So this film ticks me off in two different ways, <laughs> which is funny. So one, it upsets me just purely with the content of yeah. what they're doing and what they're putting there and how stupid it looks <laughs> and how they're just exploiting, I think, male men and women, yeah. you know, and trying to make it all sexualized and everything. So that's one area that pisses me off. And then the second one actually falls in line with they're they're following right along with the trend, which is right now they're taking all these you know proprietary type television shows or films right and then they're reverse engineering them and trying to turn them either into from a film to a show or from a show into a movie yeah and this is going right along with that trend and i don't want to support this because <laughs> i really don't like it and i don't think it works i'd love i would much rather see this guy seth gordon who's directing it you know he's done some a lot of television he did identity thief which was really not a great movie but did yep. horrible bosses which was original and pretty yeah. funny to me the first one I would love to see this guy take on a project where it's like, hey, this isn't derivative. This doesn't come from like yeah. a pre-existing television show that was really super cheesy and silly. They're using it. They're using the name to help it make. Yeah, money. I think they're making a Chips film as well, which is you know based on a television show, which and looks kind of dumb. Too. It looks kind of dumb too. So yeah, <laughs> it's it's yeah. Um, but yeah, so if I had to rate Baywatch trailer, I'd give it a D. I'm just not excited. I'd give it an F plus. All right. F plus. All right. <laughs> yeah, cool. The plus comes from Zach. Yeah, I appreciate that optimism there. Yeah. That plus is everything. Yeah. Actually, you know what? There is another film that I wanted to talk about. Another trailer that we got. Um, Ooh. and it's for Logan. Yes. Um, and it, it was, I think they call it the Amazing Grace Logan, because um, that's what the that's what the the soundtrack was behind it. Amazing yeah. Grace being played behind yeah. it. Um, this this trailer doesn't do a whole lot as far as showing new content, but it yeah. does reaffirm a lot of what we've been seeing. Yeah, it's all this, all the tone is still the same. Yeah. Um. If if there's anything this to to be said about this marketing, it's very consistent. Yes. And I think they're doing a great job. I think there are too many films out there when they go to market, it's inconsistent, and then it throws people off. Yeah. As to what it's going to be, and then it even creates false expectations before they going into. Yeah. Before they go into. And it. I would even say the same thing. You know, with Transformers, we reviewed at the beginning. They right. Did that and they're being consistent, and I appreciate that. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. So, the marketing is very consistent here. Um, I'm still incredibly excited to see it. It comes out in uh, a couple or this next month, right? So, yes. um, I think. I think it's going to be a big one, and, and if it's Hugh's last go at it, then um, then mm. it should be great. Yeah, I mean, according to the runtime on this, I think it's running over two hours now, as far as like the actual runtime of the movie. So they're definitely giving him a good long run at the last time he's probably going to be playing this character. So I can right. appreciate that. And they didn't give you too much more with the trailer. I think, like you said, they were being very consistent with it. They give you kind of an intro of Caliban. I think that's how you pronounce his name, which is a Marvel character that kind of his ability is to like track down and find other mutants. Right. And so they give you a little bit of a, you know, him talking and kind of what he looks like, which was pretty freaky, actually. Yeah, he's kind of scary looking. He, <laughs> look, he looks like um, the vampires, like the old vampires in Blade 2. For me, to, for some reason, that's what I yeah. think of. Yeah. Uh, whatever. He's kind <laughs> of a sewer dweller, is yeah. according to what I've read about him. I, I don't know the Marvel history too well, but he's kind of a sewer character. And so he he has, he's like Smeagol, you know, from Lord yeah. of the Rings. <laughs> he's been underground for such a long time. Yeah. He's, it you know, just wait. looks weird. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm kind of at the same spot with this. I don't think this really did anything to dissuade any misgivings that I have. It didn't really do anything to bring any extra excitement. It's I'll just see it and see how it goes at this point. Right. Yeah. So I'd probably give it a, a B plus. Uh, yeah. It didn't do anything. Yeah, like you said, negative or positive. It yeah. just kind of kept everything the same. So yeah, it stayed at about a B for me. Awesome. So. Cool. Well, yeah. uh, that is all for our uh, Super Bowl trailer. Um, reviews and reactions i guess absolutely and, yeah um if you want to actually check out some more stuff um that we have actually posted a couple of things on our site mm -hmm. uh, the other day over at realreviewmedia.com uh check that out there also follow us on facebook at facebook.com slash real review media and uh if you have any questions or just have any thoughts about what what we're talking about or what what were your thoughts on the super bowl trailers uh email us at uh, realreviewmedia at gmail.com Perfect. Perfect. It's been real. It's been real.